So many people are breaking into cybersecurity, whether it's a mid-career pivot, just graduating, transitioning out of the military, or moving from IT. There are so many people right now, and there's never been a better time. It's like the golden age of cyber resources. But I see people consistently making some of the most common mistakes when breaking into the field. And in this video, I am going to be telling you the five biggest mistakes that you might be making on your efforts to break into cybersecurity. I'm going to tell you what they are. And I'm going to tell you what you can do about them to make sure that you don't make those mistakes. Coming up. Hey everybody, welcome to Simply Cyber, the YouTube channel designed to help you make and take a cybersecurity career further, faster. Very excited about this video. We're going to be talking the top five things that, you know, are just common mistakes that if you didn't know would be easy to make and it's completely understandable. So let's not mess around. Let's jump right into the list and, and get those mistakes corrected. Okay. Number one, arguably the most important one that there is, is not networking or undervaluing networking. Now, when I say networking, what I'm talking about is professional uh, interaction and communication, social networking, not, you know, computer networking, although that is also quite important. But with, with professional social networking, it, you need to do it for several reasons. Arguably the most important one is because I would say like 50% of jobs that are cybersecurity related, most 50% uh, of those jobs go to people through networking, right? Like if I know someone who is can do a certain skill and I have a job or an opening or an opportunity for that particular uh, skill set, I'm more likely to just reach out directly to that person and say, hey, are you interested in an opportunity? It's not, it's not a spoil system. It's not nepotism. It's just knowing like going to a known quantity and you know honestly it's it's easier too right like i don't need to open a rack and, and screen a million candidates or whatever if i already have a candidate that i know can do the job and is qualified and everything then it, it's just it's faster uh it's 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 more you know it's a known quantity right so by developing those networking relationships you know, I can't guarantee you that it's going to turn into a job, but the likelihood increases exponentially if you're doing that professional networking. On top of that, you actually can really get a lot of value out of uh, professional networking. I've said this on uh, Neil Bridges' stream the other night. If you, if you want to check that out, Cyber Insecurity uh, on the 26th of June episode, it was good. In cybersecurity, you're not going to know everything, right? Like I've been in the field 17 years. There's a ton I don't know, right? So by professionally networking, you can fill some of your own gaps and you can identify people and talent in areas that are not your strength. So then you begin to build out kind of like, a, I don't want to call it like a, a Justice League or an Avengers team, but you begin to build out capabilities um, and that you can call upon or, or, or you know, if you have a specific question, like say you don't know cloud, right? But you know someone who's an expert at cloud. If a cloud question pops up, you can go to them because you have a relationship with them and ask them, you know, hey, what are your thoughts on this, right? So professional networking has huge, huge impact. Now, if you're new to the field or you're, you know, you're just breaking in and you, you don't feel like what you have to say um, has value, like if that's your position and that's what you're thinking, don't don't sweat that. You you don't need to be like coming up with innovative, groundbreaking thoughts and stuff like that. Just engage. You can do it on LinkedIn by commenting on other people's posts, offering your thoughts. Uh, you can do it on Discord. There's tons of Discord cybersecurity related um, servers. So definitely check those out. Black Hills Information Security has an amazing Discord server. And you can begin to uh, really explore and expand your knowledge base and your professional network, which will ultimately be uh, of value. So absolutely. Number two. Okay. So this one is also important. Not starting at the finish line. Now, what do I mean by that? A lot of people who are trying to break in the industry will start at the beginning and look, look towards kind of a goal and be like, okay, like I like pen testing. I'll, I'll take this pen testing course. Right. Or I, I don't know, I'll go get security plus, or, you know, let me ask some questions. Like that's all good information. But once you reach the point where you know, you want to be a pen tester, or, you know, you want to be a compliance auditor or whatever the role is that you want, go find, like, 
you're not, say you're not ready for that role, right? It's like five years of experience or whatever. Like find whatever the job is that you want. Go pull a rec or two, right? Go pull an open job app for that job. Now we understand that you're not qualified for it right now, but that's not the point. The point is look at it. Look at what those bullets are. Look at what the minimum requirements are. Look at what the education or cert requirements are, right? Then work your way backwards. Okay. Like I need this is just made up, but like I need OSCP. This is for pen testing. I need OSCP and I need three years of experience and I need to be able to uh, do pen testing in AWS's environment. Okay, so that's the job that I want. Now back up. How fast do I want this job? I want this job in six months. Okay, very aggressive timeline, but okay. So Let's put together an OSCP training plan. What what is what is your tactical execution of getting OSCP within six months look like? And can you afford it? Can you execute on it, right? Both from a financial and from a personal time perspective. Okay, so now that's your OSCP. Now we also said AWS. So how do you get smart in AWS? Now AWS has free training, but okay, let's go look at it. What do I need to learn? What steps do I need to take? What cert of AWS do I have to get? Okay, I have to take whatever, these three sections, these three modules, and it'll take me 18 hours to go through those modules. Okay, well, if we want it in six months, put it on the schedule, put it on the calendar, commit to it, and then execute on it. So instead of kind of like getting in the car and just driving and then being like, oh, like here's a destination, here's where I am, like actually plan it, look at where you want to go, map out milestones and then execute on it. I, you will be so much more happy and satisfied with what, when you get to your destination, because it would be incredibly uh, efficient and optimized to reach that destination. Right. And for me personally, what I'm trying to convey to you is the optimized shortest path between where you are now and having a cyber job. Right. And that's, that's a huge, huge win. If you can, you know, basically execute on that uh, item. So hey, if you're getting value out of this video, uh, definitely just take a second and hit the like button down below. I really, really want to get this video pushed out to as many people as possible because I strongly believe in these, these uh, lessons learned that I want a lot of people uh, to be able to uh, see this and hear this and learn from it. Number three is not staying up on current events or basically being aware of current threat intel. Okay, so here is something that actually kind of pushes some people out of cybersecurity. Cybersecurity really isn't a nine to five punch in, punch out and check, check out kind of job. It is a lifestyle and it's constantly changing. It's constantly developing. There are very serious um, advanced persistent threat actors out there doing very serious, you know, damage and harm and, and um, cyber war type stuff. And because it's the internet is one plain battlefield that everybody's on. So if, you know, cyber war stuff's happening, uh, it could impact you, your organization, the business you're supporting these things. So by staying up on current events and threat intel type stuff, it enables you to stay on the edge of what is going on in your industry. Um, you know, if like a zero day comes out for exchange, like it did a little while ago, that's a priority one kind of thing where you got to get it fixed right away. Like you can be having those discussions or you hear about, uh, like colonial pipeline and their ransomware incident. Okay. Well, how did they get into the ransomware? Well, it was a VPN with, uh, credentials that have been compromised and that they, they hadn't made the people change their password. Okay. Well then what is our organization doing? Are, do we do password changes? Do we check? Have I been pwned to see if people's passwords and user accounts have shown up. I know that doesn't work with password reuse across platforms, but my point is you can't even think about having that conversation unless you're getting in this threat intel and these threat feeds. Uh, and I don't necessarily mean like um, threat intel that goes into a SIM or something like that. I'm talking about like news, current events. Personally, most mornings I listen to the CISO Security Headlines podcast. I'll put a link in the description below. It's like a six minute uh, a podcast every weekday. Uh, and there's usually like four or five stories. It's excellent. It is literally doing what I'm telling you about right now. And oh, by the way, when you go into a job interview and they like, they will ask you, it's a pretty common question in the industry. They will ask you, how do you stay informed? And if you have a killer answer for that, for that uh, question, it's going to look really good on you. Um, and trust me. Okay. Because, because I, I want, 
I want people who are who are staying abreast of these things because I need you to be agile and and quickly pivoting around whatever the current you know threat landscape is. Number four, this one's a little controversial, a little racy. It's you don't need people are spending too much money on self development and like ways to break into the industry. Um, more money does not equal more value, right? Like if you spend three thousand dollars on a boot camp. There's no guarantee that that three thousand dollars is going to have the return on investment that you want, and I feel like a lot of people fall into the trap of thinking, well, it's expensive, then it must be good, or you know, it's a it's a six day boot camp, so I can compress my my schedule to to one week, and in a week I can be broken into cybersecurity, and it's just it's just not realistic, okay? So there, I'm not saying don't pay for anything, right? Because there are some really uh, great trainings and stuff out there that are cost affordable, right? Like 10 bucks, five bucks, 20 bucks. Uh, but I feel like a lot of people fall into this trap. I've seen so many people go to a boot camp and then reach out to me and say, hey, Jerry, like uh, I did this boot camp, but I'm still confused. It, it didn't really do what I wanted it to do. Um, so I, I hear that enough that I'm now basically making this, this statement that you really should do your due diligence on what are these programs, whether it's a boot camp, cert, uh, whatever, um, what, what are these programs, what's their end goal? How do they execute on it? Who's teaching it, right? Are they qualified? And then probably the most important thing that you can do is try to identify or find somebody who has already gone through that program and ask them straight up, what like what do you think about this? Is it worth the money? Did you have a good experience? Did it do anything for you to actually transition you or transform you into a cybersecurity practitioner? Or was it just like, bleh, right? I want you, if you're going to spend money, I want it to have high impact, high value. I don't want people spending money just for the sake of spending money because I see people do it all the time and it, it's it's frustrating to me. Make sure if, if you think that this video is great, I got the fifth one coming up, but definitely share this. I feel like these are important things that I, I want as many people trying to break into cybersecurity to know. So share this video if you would. I, I sincerely appreciate it. Uh, I Like I said, I want everybody to know these lessons. So the fifth and final one is not positioning yourself as a cyber professional. Okay, so like, let's agree. You haven't broken into the field yet. Maybe you work in financials or you work in IT or you, you know, you're in the military and transitioning out or whatever, whatever. If you want to be in cyber, begin positioning yourself, begin branding yourself as a aspiring cybersecurity professional, okay? So what does this look like? Well, um, a couple, two things. One, on LinkedIn, uh, you know, Put your role, like change your role to something like aspiring cybersecurity professional. I see some people do this. Uh, clean up your LinkedIn uh, profile. Uh, you can look at mine. Um, it's pretty good. Like the the banner, the clean the, the your profile. Make sure that that's professional. Have all sorts of cyber keywords in there. Demonstrate what you are doing to break into cybersecurity and highlight all that. If you have done previous work that has absolutely nothing to do with that, you can have that there. But don't don't put it just to have a lot of content there, right? Like kind of tailor and focus your things to be cyber focused, right? Secondly, this one's important. You can create a blog or run a blog or have a blog or whatever. I'm assuming if you're trying to break into the field that you are doing things to move yourself into the field, right? So you're either doing try hack me, hack the box, you're doing labs, range force, you're reading books, you're uh, contributing um, on on uh, you know shows or whatever, you're doing internships, what, whatever it is, start a blog, start capturing those things. It, it's gonna be huge for a couple of reasons. One, it gives you a place to actually uh, mentally digest the things that you're learning in a different way. And it's going to have some, some sticking re retention with you personally. Secondly, it will demonstrate to other people what your writing style is like and where your focus has been, which is awesome. I assure you, whenever you apply uh, to a job and you're going to get an interview and stuff, high probability that the people who are uh, looking at you will Google you, right? And if your blog comes up as like one of the first results, they're probably going to look at it. And there, this is interesting. This person is a complex, interesting, dynamic individual. Look, they got this blog. Oh, and like it becomes a talking point in the interview and helps differentiate you as a candidate from the other candidates, right? So uh, I, I think that that's absolutely a huge, huge opportunity to take advantage of and one that a lot of people are are not, frankly. So, okay. 
I was super excited about this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave some comments below. What are your thoughts? Am I, am I wrong? Am I dead wrong? Or do you think that these are good thoughts? Have you done any of these and not made the mistakes, but taken advantage of the resolution uh, around not making the mistake? And did it have any value for you? I would love to have a dialogue in the comments um, with you about this because I, I really feel truly that these mistakes are correctable and avoidable and uh, too many people are making them, frankly. Okay. So until next time, thanks so much. Stay secure. <laughs>